so you got a journal. Now what? Hi everyone! So I'm going to try something different today and show you how I journal or how I plan to journal in my new B6 Aura Spell Planner, uh, which I unboxed in this video up here. Um, this is the Simple Grid Companion, so it's lines or grids but undated um, and I'm going to use this as my journal and I used to journal in the Stalogy which I really loved but I wanted to try something new but I did love how many pages it held so I might go back to this after this one but it's just so cute I wanted to try it and I wanted to try the Tamoe River paper and then before this one when my Stalogy was uh, done. I used just a, a notebook that I had because I love the cover. Um, so yeah, I started journaling because of this natal chart reading I had with an astrologist and I was kind of in, you know, like a rut of a time, desperate time. And she had advised me that I should journal to get out all of the negative chaotic thoughts in my head to just kind of like dump it out. And that was how I started and I really loved it, right? Like everyone says journaling is great. It's so helpful in your self-care, self-healing process. And, you know, it is true, but, you know, I wanted to just make this video to help share tips as to how to actually do it. Okay, so my first tip for how to start journaling is to find something that you like to use. Something that's cute, something that, you know, has nice paper, whatever. So this is that step one is done um you know get some nice pens or some colorful pens and when i say nice it doesn't mean you have to go out and buy something expensive like again it can be anything like this journal i had before was was free right so definitely doesn't have to be anything too fancy um, but just something that you you like and enjoy looking at or doesn't like give you you know the heebie-jeebies whenever you look at it to already deter you from doing it and you know what because we're planners you know we let's put a sticker on it so i'm going to use this one of disneyland from no white space stickers that i've been hoarding so let's just put this on these are always so hard for me to get off all right there we go very precious the holder of all my secrets and dreams <laughs> okay so that you know step one makes your process of journaling just a little bit more pleasant and um, pens you know i like to use paper mate flares and then that g5 i forgot who makes it um but that pen that writes really nicely um so i'll use that but you know it really doesn't matter free pens also work great so then now you have a starting point doesn't that look cute? I love it. Sorry for the glare. Okay. The easiest, easiest way to start with your journal, in my opinion, is to create a gratitude list. So just list one to five things. You know, don't even make it that hard. If you can only list one thing, list one thing that day. If you can list five, list five things that day of what you're gr grateful for, right? And you can keep a running list. Like here, I'll probably make a running list. Um, but you can also use it as like one, two, three, this is what I'm gr grateful for and start journaling like free writing after that. Um, they can be really simple. You don't have to be, you know, like, oh my gosh, the best thing, I got the, the job of my life, I got a rate, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy things like that. Like I'm literally probably going to write like, it rained today and I love the rain, right? So things like that are, my cat decided to sleep on my lap while I was at work. That are things, those are things, you know, that you can write, that you can be grateful for, that like really just help to make your day a little bit better and to remember like the little things in life. Here is an old gratitude list that I made, you know, so super easy. You can put stickers in it. It can be super simple, but just something to, to look back at. And it's nice, you know, to have this, this time to, to pay special tribute to what 
made you smile that day. The next one I don't have like an image of because it's already filled out, but the way I like to get into journaling and one of the easy ways to stay journaling is to use journal prompts. So I follow a few astrologists and I can link them down below if you guys are interested, but they typically have every new moon and full moon, you know, some things to think about for this new moon, like what's holding you back? What would you like to let go of are, you know, things that relate to the themes of what's going on in um, the astrological realm. But this can apply to everyday life, right? Even if you don't believe necessarily in astrology, but it's just a jumping off point. So that's the yeah, other good news about astrologists is they do it every other uh, week, basically, right? The full moon and the new moon. So that's at least twice a month that you will know that you'll be journaling. So that is already great too. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, so definitely look to that. Um, if you aren't into the astrology ones, the ones I like are Julian Elizabeth and Danny Feinstein, just to name a couple, but, um, I'll link them again in the description below, like I just mentioned. But if you're not really into that, I also like self-help books a lot. So, you know, if you're into like Gabby Ber Bernstein, I believe is last her name, um, you know, her books usually have a lot of that type of prompts that you can go through or like Shaman Durek or uh, my favorite currently is Dr. Tara Stewart. She talks a lot about neuroplasticity. So these are all kind of just ways to kickstart your brain and start journaling about the prompts that they give out. So the other thing that I do is called To Be Magnetic. It is a neural manifestation like course series. I'm part of the yearly membership. I've been part of it for years now, and I just keep up with it. Um, they have courses in there about, you know, if you're in a rut, if you're in a rock bottom, or, you know, work through your shadow, your inner child, those type of things. So I use those in my journal as well. So like shadow, and this kind of gives you an idea of like how I format mine. I usually have a title and then, you know, this was all from the course shadow. So here's my new moon uh, back to what I was talking about earlier. But, you know, they also have a lot of prompts that you go through. You, um, you listen to their deep imaginings, which is like their type of, um, I'm like blank, blanking on the word. I'm so sorry. Um, their type of, oh, meditation stuff. And they walk you through it. You know, they, they tell you things to think about. So, you know, you can also write those down in your journal like I have here. Um, and you know, if you're interested in to be magnetic, I actually have a code 15% off. I'll list it in the description below. And if you're curious about me doing more videos about to be magnetic, also let me know in the comments below if that's even something you're interested in. But anyways, so that's something else that you can kind of use as like prompts, um, or just a way to write in your journal. Uh, so also because of to be magnetic, I do write or create manifestation lists throughout the year. So, you know, I made a little space for that in this journal here. So manifestation list, and these are things that I want to achieve in the next six months to a year or maybe longer if it's a longer term goal. Um, but in my last planner, I actually started doing a manifestation list where I keep track of throughout the year and I carry that into my planner here. And it's just, I really loved it. Like it tracks my manifestations throughout the year. And then I can look back and like, oh, these are all the things that like made me happy. And these aren't necessarily the manifestations that I'm going to write on my list of what I want to achieve, but they can be things that made me happy that day. Like, I got princess parking or, you know, I got a discount on something that I, I really wanted or, um, you know, I, I got a, a free lightning lane at Disneyland, like um, just things again that make you smile kind of similar, not necessarily the same as your gratitude list, because these are things that like were extra special for that day. Like, um, you know, when I used to work next to the ice cream shop, sometimes they'd give us ice cream. I'd write that in here because I was like, oh, that was like a big perk of my day. And it's just nice to keep track of these things. Makes you smile, boosts your mood.
This is a new section that I just started this year. I titled it Her, She, Me, you know, kind of after that Megan Stallion song. But what I intend to write here is, you know, how, what do I want to be and how do I become her? Like, you know, my list would be things, I, I made a, a little brief one here, I think. And I'm going to carry it over. Yeah. So like, who am I committed to be like rich bitch energy? I want to be, you know, fun and friendly, but I also want to be, you know, a little bit more wealthy. I want to be more confident. I want supportive friends, but a tight group, you know, I want to have that deserving energy. I want to have healing, um, those type of things. Like, and what does she like? You know, I want to have good style or good hair or whatever, you know, those are just things I'm pulling out of the top of my head right now, but that's what I plan to put in here. And then it's at the front of my list. So that way I can, or the front of my journal. So I can just look at it and say like, yes, this is, this is the deserving energy that I want to tap into. So how often should you journal? I mean, really people say you should journal every day three pages a day. I mean, that's just too crazy, right? Like I, I try to journal every day, but I don't, you know, like that's just re the reality and journal when you have to, like when you start out, if you're in a bad place or if you're just unhappy, like journal whenever you feel unhappy, if something made you mad, write about it. If something made you happy, it's harder to journal about because you're like happy. So you don't think about it you know, that you'll have to work up to. But first, just journal when like your boss pissed you off or like something randomly on the street triggered you. I don't know, someone cut you off, right? Like journal about those things, journal why they made you mad. And then you can let it go. Like, honestly, once you write those things down, you usually feel so much better and it just leaves your your psyche. So that is the great thing about journaling. Um, again, if that seems too hard, try the new moon thing that and the full moon thing that's every other week. That's, you know, twice a month. That's fine. Like, don't don't set yourself up to fail. Right. If you if you're not going to journal every day, you're not going to journal every day. And that's fine. And sometimes like when I journal, like that's not a full page. Like, look at this. Like, you know, you just keep going like. I write a paragraph, right? Like, sorry, I don't want to share all of my feelings on the internet. I'll try to like blur some of it out. But um, anyways, like it doesn't have to be filled to the page is, is what I'm saying. Like if you only have enough capacity to write a couple sentences, then write a couple sentences. Like that's totally fine. Um, I also like to take my journal with me on vacation. It's pretty small, you see, so it doesn't take up too much room. And then this way, if something triggers me on vacation, which a lot of times we do get angry on vacation, right? I can just write it down, get it out of my head and still continue to enjoy my vacation. So these are my tips and tricks for journaling. I hope that they helped you, um, you know, help convince you to start journaling or uh, to think about journaling, to get back into journaling. Anyways, it has really been a tremendous help for me in my self-healing journey and I really hope that it helps you. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.